Fox County families and students. I think it's awesome that you are here to learn with me today. My name is Mr. Rogers and I teach fourth grade at Fountain City Elementary. So I'd like to give a special shout out to all my pet cats out there. You guys rock. Before we start today, I'd like to give you guys a couple of useful tips because I think it could help you have a great learning experience. There is a follow along activity packet uh, to this video that can be found on the Knox County Schools website page under the student resources tab. And hey, after you finish, I would love to see what um, you thought of this video and what your experience was like. So you can tweet us at KCS Science and share that information with us if you'd like. If this video is difficult for you to understand at any point, there are a couple of things you can do to help out with that. You can turn on closed captions if you have that available. You could also adjust the playback speed of the video so that you could slow it down. You might wanna consider watching the video in short clips, then pausing, listening to those clips again and watching them again. Lastly, you might want to ask someone in your home to watch the video with you. You can stop frequently and talk to your partner about what you heard and what you understood. Sounds. Sounds are all around us. Some sounds are really loud, like the sound of a rooster crowing. Some sounds can barely be heard, like a whisper. And some sounds are just relaxing, like the sound of a piano. But today, I want to give you a really weird question. And that question is, is it possible to see a sound? I know this question is weird, but I think it could fuel our learning today in search of an answer to it. We also have an objective for today. I want us to use our observations from an investigation that we'll do at the end of this video to explain how energy travels. Now you might be thinking to yourself, what does energy have to do with sound? Well, sound is a type of energy and it travels in waves. When you think of waves, you might be the ones that you could see at a beach. Or maybe you might think of the wave that some fans might make at a sporting event when they stand up and they sit down again. You might also think of a ripple of water that occurs when you drop something into a puddle. These are all examples of waves and waves are just the movement of energy from one place to another. So how does energy travel in waves? The first thing that happens is that an object vibrates. Vibrations are just back and forth movements that happen very quickly. So a really good example of this would, would be um, your cell phone when you get a text message and it moves back and forth very quickly. It's important to know that when this happens, the object's particles are vibrating too. Now, particles are the smallest parts of matter. So when you get a text message on your phone and your phone vibrates, these small particles that make up the phone are vibrating too. And when this happens, when these particles are vibrating, they collide with surrounding particles and they make particles around the phone vibrate too. This creates a movement of energy, a wave that ripples out from the source of the vibration, which is the phone, and creates sound energy that travels. There's a really useful 
example of energy traveling in waves that happens often in our bodies every day. Try placing your fingers gently against your throat. Next, try humming for a few seconds while your fingers are on your throat. I'll give you some time to do this. What you are feeling is the movement or vibration of your vocal cords. They're vibrating. This vibration is creating sound waves that travel outwards from your vocal cords. So now that we understand how sound waves travel, we can take a look at some of the different qualities that sound waves have. For example, why are some sounds louder or quieter than others? This has to do with amplitude. Amplitude is just a measure of the amount of energy that's in a wave. The amplitude of a wave controls the loudness or the quietness of a sound. So, if a wave has a lot of energy, we could say that it has a high amplitude. And as the amplitude of a wave increases, so will the volume of the sound that it produces. If a wave has a low amount of energy, then its amplitude will be decreased. And if its amplitude is decreased, the type of sound that it produces will also have a volume that's de decreased. Think of two meerkats whispering to each other. The amplitude of the sound waves created by the meerkats whispering is really low. So it produces a sound wave with low volume. Sounds can have other qualities than just being loud or quiet. Some, some sounds are just higher or lower than other sounds. Well, what causes this? The highness or lowness of a sound has to do with the frequency of the wave that produces the sound. Fre frequency has to do with how quick a wave is vibrating. The frequency of a wave causes the pitch or the highness or the lowness of a sound. When you think of an instrument with a high pitch, you could think of a recorder. An instrument that produces low pitch would be like a tuba. So, as a wave vibrates quickly, we can say that its frequency is high. High frequency waves create high pitch sounds like that of a recorder. If the wave is vibrating slowly, we can say that it has a low frequency. And low frequency waves create low pitches or low pitch sounds like that of a tuba. Now that we've learned how sound waves travel, let's engage in an activity to see if it's actually possible to see a sound. First, you'll need to gather some supplies and make sure you have your parents' permission before you begin. You'll need a metal baking pan, a metal spoon, some cling wrap, a medium or large size bowl, and lastly, you'll need a pinch of rice. The first thing that you'll want to do is to place your bowl on a solid surface like a table. Next, stretch your cling wrap over the top of the bowl. It's really important that you pull your cling wrap tightly over the, the top of your bowl, but don't pull so hard that you will tear the cling wrap because that will ruin your investigation. Next, you'll want to place your pinch of rice grains on top of the cling wrap. After that, you'll need to hold your baking sheet close to the bowl. Make sure the bowl and the baking sheet aren't touching each other. 
then you can, you can use your metal spoon to tap your baking sheet. Vary the way that you tap your baking sheet. Sometimes try taps with a lot of force, and then sometimes try taps with not so much force. After this, you'll want to record your observations. See what you know about the grains of rice. Are they moving? What kind of movements do they make? Lastly, you'll want to explain what caused these movements to happen. Think deeply about this and everything we've learned earlier in, in the video. Use your observations to form an explanation. So, after all our exploration, do you think it is possible to see a sound? I want to thank you for taking time to watch this video. I hope that you've had a lot of fun and that you've learned something new. Don't forget to share what you've learned with us and tweet us at KCS Science. I really appreciate you being here and I hope you had a blast. Goodbye for now.